Hello, it is Friday, May 12th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, which means our first of two themeless puzzles for the week, and it might be a tricky puzzle at that. And this potentially tricky themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Mitchell Turek, Jenny Montague, Lewis Williams, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Showmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support, their sustaining this channel, keeping the whole thing going. And for that, I am deeply appreciative. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the campaign. It means a lot to me. And like I say, it does really sustain this channel. Um, if you'd like to become a patron yourself and help help keep this channel going, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. That includes uh, yesterday, the monthly bonus puzzle for the month of May, as well as uh, today, I'll be solving the next tranche, the next week of uh, mini crosswords for the mini crossword pseudo speed solve weekly roundup. So look forward to that. Uh, you can also become a benefactor and get access to all of the, uh, well, to the one <laughs> official Daily Crawl, Daily Cross, let's check the, uh, Daily Solve, let's check the Cross's mug. I don't know, fumbled that a bit. Anyway, you can get that mug if you become a benefactor and the videos for any other level. Uh, all that said, you um, should also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not gotten around to that. And there is, of course, the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community that can be joined through a link in the description field as well. All right, let's solve today's crossword. Let's give it a shot. This is uh, a themeless construction by Enrique Henestrosa Anquiano, and this, uh, I think he's responsible for about half a dozen crosswords for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, let's see what's in store for us on this themeless crossword. Wow, interesting looking grid. Sort of how the top is sort of bifurcated here into two, two, uh, kind of rectangular blocks. And then we've got this uh, sort of these unusual black cells in the grid. It's just, an, just a, I don't know, nothing really to say about it. And it won't have any thematic resonance, I don't think, but it's an unusual looking grid to me for whatever reason. Anyway, powdered green tea is probably matcha. Um, generally it's powdered and is green. Time to focus on oneself. M me time or me, a me day maybe? You're taking a me day, you could say? Recess retort, right? <laughs> this is this is one of these. Um, there's a whole set of sort of retort answers in the New York Times crossword that includes basically any configuration of the verb to be and then some kind of intensifier like or, or negation, like am not or are so or you know, any any different version of those pertaining to I or you and I'm doing something or I'm not doing something. Anyway, this one is probably could be am to or are not no it probably is am to or it could be are so you are so or i am to see it's just it's the problem with these you just don't know those both end with o waver wildly is to yo-yo maybe and like leaving the price tag on a gift is a bit tacky you want to remove the evidence of that commercial transaction at its price don't assume says to ask so here we go that that disambiguates this resource resort uh, recess retort is not am to but is are so a mistake fixer could be an eraser you could uh, erase a mistake made in pencil to transfer as wine could be to decant the wine to a new uh, a new vessel and farm fresh box letters this is csa which i think is for community supported agriculture those ve vegetable boxes you can order from local farms and things uh, they rule the roost hens, I suppose, rule the roost, roosting chickens. And sketching tools, art supplies? No. Art pencils, maybe? Uh, which could be erased with an eraser, which nicely crosses this. Uh, this might be the answer. There might be something else, but let's check the crosses and see. One way to start a point. Could be an opening argument, or it could be something with... I don't know, fencing or something, or it could be tennis, some kind of serve. Not sure. Appalachian spring hours, Eastern Standard Time, I would think, the US time zone. And can't make me, I won't, you can't make me do it, I won't. 
Um, that might be it. Nothing else. Is that all or uh, nothing else? Is that all is... Is it done? It doesn't doesn't really sound good. Let's check the, the crosses here. If one doesn't drink much. Hmm. What about this? Like Bluetooth connections, those are wireless. Bluetooth is um, of course its primarily primary utility is that it's wireless. Leonard Bernstein's Candide, e.g. an operetta, probably. Yeah. Operetta by Leonard Bernstein, okay doesn't, so what is this? Doesn't, oh, I see sips, right. So it's not doesn't drink much as a habit in one's life, but rather in this moment, you aren't drinking much, you're just sipping. Okay. General Sherman in Tulare County, oops, Tulare County, California is the world's largest one. I have no idea what that's referring to. The world's, what world's largest, what would a category of the world's largest things be? I just don't see any words that jump out at me immediately other than things like area. I don't think it's don't think it's the world's largest area in an, in an absolute sense. Uh, doctor alternative could be Herr, maybe. So in German, maybe you refer to someone's title could be doctor. You refer to someone as Dr. Smith or whatever, but Herr, if they're just a mister. I'm not sure. That could be it. Nothing else is... Oh, maybe is this it? I don't know. Maybe this looks like, so this is TSA. Yes. Stackers of plastic tubs and brief are the TSA. Stacking plastic tubs uh, into which electronics and liquids and shoes and things are, are piled to go through the uh, scanning machines. Oh, and here's another German thing. We had uh, Dr. Alternative and then Herr, both in German, and then Das ist gut. Uh, this is good in German. Okay, here we go. Little confab. Um, so a little, a little sort of meeting or conversation or decision-making process, maybe. What is this? What are we looking for? Set. Not sure. Let's keep looking. Analgesic with a soothing sounding name. Soothing sounding. Is this, is that, oh, is that, nothing else, is that it? That sounds better. Is this it? Sounds like you're be, you've been underwhelmed by something. You're saying, is this it? That's all. Whereas, is that it? You could be asking someone, do you need me any further? Or is that it? Okay, so that, that does look better. So little confab is a, a little confab is a tete a tete, right? Head to head, literally in French. Okay, there we go. Oh, a leave, because it alleviates your pain. Right. Okay. This is a brand of, uh, of, of pain relief of analgesic. Okay. There we go. So one way to start a point. Oh, spin serve. It is, it is a kind of tennis serve. Spin serve. There we go. So what was this? Oh, General Sherman, the world's largest tree. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Right. I, I've probably seen pictures of this before, but I just couldn't think I, the word tree didn't come to mind for me at all. And I didn't remember the the tree off, off the top of my head. Okay. If something's a snap, it's easy. Oh, yay. You might say either sincerely or sarcastically minus and the blank of woo book by rapper Rizza. That would be the Tao of woo. Oops. Oh, this isn't yay. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, you, you might say to someone, oh, you, you're such a, such a card or whatever. I don't know. I don't think people say such a card, but why do I have that in my head? Minus. Um, computer flow, like insert to picture to from file. That's a menu something. Uh, oops, oops, oops. Um, it's not a context menu. What is, what is, what do you call that? I don't know. It's sort of. So I'm looking up at the menus at the top of the screen here to see if it will jog my memory. It doesn't particularly. Oh, minus is sans or sans, depending on how close to the French pronunciation you'd like to get. And it means without or minus something. So, you know, minus the serifs in the case of a font, sans serif, sans serif. Okay, polite thing to call someone. Madam, maybe? 
Oh, and that's 39 is that as well. I bet that'll be sir. So there we go. Male equivalent. Okay. Blank candy, best friend of Wonder Woman. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to get that from the crosses. That's fine. Musicians, mouthpiece. A reed maybe for, or a valve, maybe a valve for a trumpet player, something like that. Neckwear that's not constricting, one hopes. A tie, maybe this isn't a valve. Um, don't blow it. Right, and this isn't in, I don't know the answer, but this, just to, to explain what's going on potentially here, this is not in quotation marks, which means it's not an equivalent of saying don't blow it. That'll be probably your first thought. It was certainly my first thought when I read this clue. I was thinking, what's a phrase that means don't blow it? That's not what this is because it's not in quotation marks. It's not being vocalized um, as an expression. The exclamation point, or sorry, it's not in quotation marks. Um, the exclama exclamation point means it's a convention in the New York Times crossword, and it means we're saying this about the answer. So th this is going to be something someone is telling you not to blow. And actually, trumpet, I mentioned trumpets. Trumpet could actually fit in here. I don't know why that would, someone would be telling you not to blow it. I guess because it would be loud, but um, it's probably something else that matches a bit better. Oh, and this is that Wonder Woman. I just have no idea. Okay, let's keep looking around. Brainstorming diagram. Oh, right. This isn't Eastern Standard Time. Sorry. Because it's it's in spring. It's Eastern Daylight Time. Yes, because I was looking at this brainstorming diagram and I was thinking brainstorming idea something, maybe idea map, I don't know. Um, but it didn't fit with this. And I didn't think about the Appalachian spring hours. I just thought time zone and went straight to standard. But no, that should have been daylight time. Okay. Well, let's see if idea map works. Philosopher Girard, who coined mimetic desire, Rene, um, and brand whose B stands for brush. Yes, this is looking okay. Oral B. So we have two proper nouns. We have Rene, which is a name, and Oral B, which is a brand. So that those can always be a bit tough. Lauder of Co oh, and here's an, yet another one. Look at that. Este Este Lauder, famous cosmetician. So that's that's actually kind of surprising, isn't it? We have three of those crossing each other. So does that give me this menu thing, a computer flow? So it's not just the menu itself, it's the, it's the path through the menu. And yet I just don't see it. Oh, that's frustrating. Best of the best. Best of the best. Ah, don't see that either, that's very frustrating. Uh, well, can we get some some short ones? Devil followers, devilish. That's a, that's a um, that's an adjective. Devilish. Rock band with the 2020 Album of the Year nominee, Women in Music, Part Three. Don't know. I'm not the person to ask for a 2020 Album of the Year nominee, unfortunately. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll recognize it when I see it. I don't know. Blank minor, Asia minor, probably. Uh, oh, right. Here's that again. Oh, subsection of an, subsection of an orchestra. Subsection. So it'll be something specific, either a specific, so it could be something like, what, what would that be? What would a subsection be? Do they mean subsection in terms of all the way down to a specific instrument or something? Or it could be something like woodwinds. This looks like Isabella, the House of the Spirits novelist Isabella not sure oh oh all-time greats is the best of the best there we go okay that worked out so subsection of an orchestra is what oh clarinets okay it was a, it was a specific instrument in this case all right and then here we have oh a cascading menu I see okay I don't think I was aware of that as the as terminology I wonder how common that uh, that terminology is but it certainly makes sense because the the sub menus Speaking of subsections, they sort of cascade out from one another. Okay, so don't blow it. Don't blow it. A tig. Don't. What should you? What should you not blow? A tiger, something. Tight. I don't know. 
Barb and Star go to Vista, it looks like Vista Del Mar, 2021 film. I've not seen that, but this Isabella, I don't know, it's not ringing a bell to me. How a lawyer might be kept in retainer or on retainer often. Is that neckwear that's not constricting? No, you would probably be. Oh, no, maybe. Oh, no, it's not tie. Oh, wow. Okay. This is a bit of a pun. It's a boa. So it's, you know, like a feather boa, which isn't a particular, it's not particularly constricting compared to a tie, but because uh, it evokes a boa constrictor, the snake. So you would hope, you would hope it's not a boa constrictor. There we go. Okay. Uh, that's a bit, that's a bit cheeky, isn't it? Musician's mouthpiece. Oh, an agent, right. It's a metaphorical mouthpiece, not a literal one. So it's someone employed or, or rather actually, I guess, not even really kept on retainer. I suppose they work for a percentage, an agent. But anyway, uh, they're um, the mouthpiece for the musician's career. And then don't blow it. A big deal. Does that work? Here we have Etta. Etta Candy. Best friend of Wonder Woman. I have no idea if that's correct. Uh, sure. I mean, it's sort of vaguely punny in the way that often sort of comic book names are, right? I mean, or she ate some candy. I don't, I don't really know if that's what's being, as if that's meant to be a sort of cute thing there. Anyway, Isabella Dende. I hope this is correct. Big deal. Air Safety Organization. Yes, the Federal Aviation Authority or something. Uh, FAA. I don't know if it's authority or agency. I'm never quite certain with those. Could be agency. Some shortcuts probably ends with an S. Cult 1990s sitcom set at WNYX. Oh, I bet this is news radio. I've not, I've seen a bit of it. I haven't seen much of it. I know there are people who are really into it. Uh, so this isn't a big deal, is it? Let's delete these. Don't blow it. A big... What is it? A big... I don't know. Oh, that's annoying. I'll have to come back to it. I mean, this does look like Etta, doesn't it? A big... Oh, a big lead. Oh, Isabel Allende. That sounds much more familiar. Okay. So, big lead. Don't, don't blow it in a in a race or something or a game. Ah, uh, okay. That is better. I think, what did I have there before? Big, I already can't remember. Oh, that's frustrating. Ridiculous that I already forgot that. <laughs> right. uh, oh, it was a big deal as in you're sort of closing a deal. Maybe if you're a salesperson or something. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Let's move on. Initiation ritual is, I'm not sure. Oh, is it Hain? That's a band. And uh, one of the Hain sisters, I guess, was the star of P.T. Anderson's most recent film, Licorice Pizza, which I thought was absolutely great. And she did an incredible job. And she was playing, she co-starred with Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, who also, I think that was, I think maybe for each of them, it was their first film, certainly their first major film. And they both did great. Anyway, to be, maybe maybe not in her case, but in his case, certainly. But I think maybe both of them. Anyway, to be worthy of is to, um, I hope this is actually the answer because I just put it in there and now I can't think of the answer to this. But let's keep looking around. To conduct is to, or conduct. It could be conduct as a noun. And it's hard to see through. Is this not news radio? I'm sure it is. Word with pinky or promise. Pinky ring or promise ring. There we go. Some shortcuts. Shortcuts. Oh, right. It's not shortcuts. That's a single word. It's cuts that are short. Fades, maybe? Haircuts. Okay. There we go. Portmanteau structure built from discarded cans. A, a pyramid? I don't, think I've, I don't think I've encountered this word before, but that's my guess. If you constructed a pyramid from beer cans, you could call it a pyramid, I guess. Uh, there we go. To be worthy of something is to 
nerve, I, don't, I still don't quite see it. Conduct is too. There's just, I just am not seeing these down here. It's so frustrating. It's hard to see through. Oh, smog, so pollution. They hatch late in life. Nest eggs, I suppose, right? So this will refer to kind of money set aside for retirement uh, later in life. And then preventative preventive measure is a ban. You ban something so it happens, you, you know, prevent it before it happens. And then direction traveled on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. Um, well, there are obviously two possible directions and they're the opposite of each other. So on the Bay Bridge, uh, you could go, oh, does it, <laughs> I'm trying to remember which direction it slightly slopes. Is it slopes? Is it north or south? I want to say if you were going east, you'd be going east by northeast on the, on the Bay Bridge. Does that work with this? Yes. Third of Sophocles Theban plays is Antigone. There we go. Okay. So good. My memory, I mean, I guess I could have got it from Antigone anyway, but I'm glad my memory served me well there. Okay. And at least you know, because it's a direction, at least you know that the letters are only going to come from the set of E, N, S, and W. So these kinds of clues are often, um, you know, gettable, fairly gettable from the, the crosses, even if you don't know the geography in question. Oh, okay. So I have something wrong here. Narrate. So what did I what did I do in, in, improperly here? Maybe this isn't Hain after all. Uh, oh, to Mer oh Haim. It is Haim. Sorry. Okay, that is. I just misremembered it. Okay, be worthy of his merit. There we go. Haim. That, that was the name. It's the family name. Okay. Uh, initiation ritual. I don't know. What is that? Daytona 500 organization. Is that NASCAR? Probably. There we go. And C2H6 compound. Yikes. An ethane or something, or an ethene or something like that. Oh, an initiation ritual is an oath. You take an oath to be initiated into some sort of organization or group or society. So if you're not forward, maybe you're shy as, a, as an individual. And if you wrote some hip hop lyrics, say you rhymed. So this does look like ethane or something like that. Probably ends in N-E. I just I don't really remember my chemistry very well at all, to be honest. So I'm not I'm not very confident about that. Name associated with simple explanations. Name associated with simple explanations. Baseball's blank Victorino, nicknamed the Flying Hawaiian. No idea. Brought on, you hired somebody, you brought them on to staff. And a kind of pit could be a mosh pit in a in a sort of metal show, maybe. In a uh, live live show, I mean. Uh, name associated with simple explanations. Oh, Occam as an Occam's razor used to uh, sort of um, suspect what kind of explanation for something is more likely because it is uh, sort of more straightforward. I know that's not an accurate... <laughs> I know that's not mathematically accurate, and there's always people who pull me up on that, or scientifically accurate, perhaps. C2H6 compound, ethane. Okay, there we go. Baseball's Shane, maybe? Let's see. Letter after phi. Uh, yeah, okay, it looks like Kai. So there we go. All right. That was the Friday Crossword um, by Enrique Henestrosa Anguiano, and a nice, themeless puzzle. We had some surprising areas such as this area, actually quite a few, quite a few um, proper nouns because we had Oral B, Este, Rene, Antigone, um, Haim. Yeah, there are, there are, oh, news radio, I suppose, in a way. That's, that, that's basically a proper noun in this context. Um, NASCAR. Um, yeah. Just, just quite a few. Anyway, uh, those can be tricky, and sometimes they can be easy. If you if you happen to know them, they're sort of the easy. They tend to be the easiest clues, and if you don't happen to know them, they're often the the most difficult. Oh, Isabella Lende, there we go. Um, Etta, here's yet another one. Yeah, they were actually just they were all over, weren't they? Okay, boy, sorry about my stomach growling. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, let's discuss. Let me know how you fared with this puzzle, and let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. So. Oops. There we go. All right. Now some clues from yesterday's puzzle. 
of which I pulled out four, it looks like. Well, so there were, unsurprisingly, I would say maybe even a majority of the comments on yesterday's crossword were about the um, the rebus. Were, they were about the uh, the grid yesterday with that E equals MC squared theme. And uh, there were various people had different experiences with that. And But the one that I thought was interesting here, well, one that I thought was particularly worth reading, rather, was from Gridstop, who says... Um, when a rebus means two things in different directions, accepting both with a slash between is always accepted. The New York Times claims today that E, M, C, E slash M, C, and M, C slash E would all validate M, C slash E. It's, I mean, fair enough if that's their convention that they'll always accept those with a slash. But it's it's strange to me that you would accept M, C slash E and not simply E, M, C. But... Fair enough. I know you can't support every single possible thing anyone would think of, but but there we go. Uh, there you have it. I think if you if you didn't know about this issue and you were simply solving that on your own and you put in something like what I did yesterday, EMC, and it didn't validate, you might just be stuck permanently because it wouldn't occur to you to put a slash in there. All right. Michael Stollard says, a fun fact about Heron's formula from 61 across, referring to the area of a triangle. It's not a very common formula for a triangle, so I'm sure you haven't heard it before. You're probably right. I don't think I have. Um, but it's extremely useful in that you can find the area of any triangle using just the three side lengths. This is possible because triangles have SSS congruence, basically meaning any triangle that has three equal side lengths must be the same triangle up to rotation and reflection. Oh, that makes sense. That's right, of course. Yes, that makes perfect sense. All right, Rabbit regarding uh, comments regarding Annie's organic snacks, and she says, I knew this immediately. Their mascot is a rabbit, and a lot of their snacks are rabbit-shaped, which makes them the go-to whenever I'm gifted snacks. I certainly can't complain. They make delicious stuff, but being named Rabbit gets me more Annie snacks than I would like to buy for myself. Oh, that's funny, right? Sorry about that. that uh, I guess that's a bit of a misfortune, but at least they're free. Uh, Craig Horleman says, confirms that Mandy Patinkin did indeed win the Tony for playing Che Guevara in the musical Evita in 1980. So there you go. Um, I can imagine at that age, you would have made a very, a very fitting Che Guevara. All right. And there we have it. That was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, um, in, <laughs> hopefully my stomach quiets down a bit by tomorrow's crossword. And that will be Saturday, an even trickier crossword with Again, no theme. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.